Now we will discuss the morphology in Cushing syndrome. Now you know that Cushing syndrome is an interplay of two organs, pituitary gland and adrenal gland. So we will first discuss the morphology of pituitary in Cushing syndrome and then we will discuss the morphology of adrenal glands in Cushing syndrome. So let's first cover the morphology at pituitary level. Now even in pituitary, there can be one of the two types of changes depending upon the cause. If the cause of Cushing syndrome is pituitary adenoma, then you know that we have covered this one in pituitary section that there will be cellular monomorphism instead of admixtures of cells and the reticular network will be sparse. And if the cause of Cushing syndrome is adrenal tumor or hyperplasia, then the steroid released from these adrenal glands will request the pituitary to stop secreting ACTH hormone, which is called feedback inhibition. This lack of secretory activity results in loss of granules from the cytoplasm of the cells and with the loss of granules, the cytoplasm becomes homogeneous and lightly basophilic. This change is called crook hyaline change. Now we will discuss the morphology of adrenal glands in case of Cushing syndrome. And this also depends upon the underlying cause. If the Cushing syndrome is secondary to ACTH, then ACTH will cause diffuse hyperplasia of adrenal glands. And as adrenal glands require cholesterol to make these steroid hormones, so accumulation of cholesterol will result in vacuolated appearance of cells because you know that lipids do not get stained. Now if Cushing syndrome is due to adrenal adenoma or adrenal carcinoma, then adrenal gland will show a solitary or a single nodule. And on the microscope, the nodule will appear as a mass of cells that are similar to normal cells of zona fasciculata. So the change that happens just is the quantity of cells. And as this tumor would release high amount of steroids, the feedback inhibition of ACTH secretion will result in a zone of atrophy surrounding the tumor. Now if Cushing syndrome is due to exo exogenous steroids, these exogenous steroids will go to pituitary and will request him to stop secreting ACTH because there is no more need of it. This lack of ACTH causes diffuse atroph atrophy of adrenal glands. So overall, if you see diffuse hyperplasia, it is ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. If you see diffuse atrophy, it is due to exogenous steroids. And if you see a mass of cells or tumor surrounded by a zone of atrophy, it is an adenoma or a carcinoma.